We've done similar products to what I normally use or what you might already use, but repurposing them, using different shapes, thinking about the products you're using a little bit differently so you're not taking off your makeup underneath while you're breathing into it, cleanliness a little bit, you know, trying to prevent breakouts while wearing a mask. A lot of places require you to wear a mask. This is a good way to not waste makeup if you want to take it off for a moment, have it not get everywhere. Anywho, I just wanted to create a tutorial for if you have to be out and about wearing a mask. If you want to holler at honeys and take it off for a moment, you're still good. We don't have a structured contour. We don't have highlighter on. We still have glow and structure because of the way that we put the products in a way that will fade nicely and long wearing products. So anyways, if you want to see us get the look, please stay tuned. It's a chatty one. We're talking a lot of makeup tips today. Enjoy. So I'm going to go in first with the Glow O2H dark spot toner they just came out in this jumbo size which i love because i just ran out and i love this they also have these little um pads so you don't have to use the cotton pads so i'm just going to take a little bit on my little pad here i like to use a lot and i like to keep the skin like i don't do a ton all the time with skincare but i'm noticing now with wearing a mask and breathing into it and all that it's good to just keep your skin extra extra clean during this time especially with all the heat that's happening now with it being summer i wanted to try and find ways to make make it work better so that when you're wearing your mask it isn't rubbing off all over the place so one thing i already have that i use lots in my videos is the milk makeup hydro primer and this actually boosts your skin's moisture by i don't know a percentage but um you can actually use this instead of moisturizer and it has a little bit of like a tacky feel to it but once you let it sit for a minute it makes any foundation while i'm wearing so i love it especially in the summer when it's super hot and you don't want to wear a ton of heavy creams especially when you're wearing a mask that's making you like fog up and feel all sweaty so oh, i just double up on this and this works great for me Next up, because I'm not doing much highlighter, I'm going to take the Marc Jacobs Dew Drop, which I've obviously loved up. This one's in Fantasy, but they're not oily at all. A lot of times I use liquid glow products that have moisture in them or oil, and that just won't cut it underneath the mask. And you're going to see how this is so done. I love it. You're going to see how it grips the skin with the Hydro Grip Primer, which is good. I'm just being very lightly, not tagging on the skin. To blend it in, it's going to be blending. This, I feel like the Hydro Grip Primer really helps to keep the foundation super long wearing. So next up, I'm still gonna use my same foundation, the Pat McGrath Labs Sublime Perfection in Medium Deep 22. And I'm gonna blend that on with my hand, but this is a little bit more slippy, and that's why I was okay with the dew drops not being fully blent in because this will blend in all together so this feels a little slippy at first and then it just settles and is actually long wearing but it's nice because you can build it up for underneath the mask I'm not really building it up so usually I'll do like a few layers but I'm just gonna like not waste it and do it light so I wanted to do this makeup so that it looks good if you want to take off your mask but it makes sense and isn't too thick and rubbing off all over your mask blah, blah. I should look into a mirror Next up, I'm gonna take the Huda Beauty Overachiever Concealer, which, like I said, I'm trying to use the same products that I had before, but just using them in a different way so that it makes sense underneath a mask and with this heat outside. Usually I go, you know, quite a bit up here, down my nose, above my lip, around my mouth, but we're not doing all that because sometimes when you're putting too much makeup on underneath a mask, it just comes off and you look all blotchy. So, being a little bit more conservative with it, and I'm still giving myself a highlight, but I'm cutting it quite high up on my temples as like a little highlight. I'm just keeping the highlight of my nose on the upper bridge, not doing anything on the tip or anything like that. Pulling it quite a bit up. Then I'll just take what's ever left over and do it. Or then I'm gonna make sure there's no product in my brow. I'm gonna go in with the Brow Styler by Benefit Cosmetics. Going a little closer. And I'm just doing right along lower, uh, lower the bottom row pair. 
kind of flicking it up. I'm not being too like crazy with it or structured because I'm gonna snatch it after. But I've been liking this, taking my purse. If it is sweaty, you need to uh, touch up. But this actually stays pretty good because it has a powder side to it. But I'm keeping it a little bit more light on the inner part. Pulling it out like that. Nice straight brow, then I'll tip it over to the other side. And I'm gonna take the powder part and just stamp it on all the little baldy areas that I've got here. Mostly on the outer tail. So I'm gonna take a little bit of concealer mixed with foundation and just sculpt these babies out because they're a little fuzzy wuzzy right now. And I just like to give them a little lift and clean them up, especially when I'm doing a brow product that's a little bit softer and lighter. Do a little layer on top too. But I like a softer brow in this heat. Okay, eyebrows done. We finna move on to eyes. So first thing, this. Permagel Ultra Glide Liner by Pat McGrath in Coffee. And I'm doing this first because everything I'm using is super long wearing, so sometimes long wearing on top of long wearing doesn't blend that well, so the nude sticks that I'm about to use are very long wear wearing, and I want a little bit of smudge time, so that's why I'm doing this first. Keep it a little sharpen, you know? And I'm gonna do this like, pretty rough but uh basically i just want to imagine a line going from the bottom lash line and just go up it doesn't even need to be perfect like lock smudge it out with our finger and we can sculpt it out after and then i'm just going to do a little line connecting into it and we're going to touch this up later make it a little darker but right now i just want to get like the base in there Like I said, it doesn't need to be perfect. We just want a little line in there. Let's make this even. Yeah. I've been really into doing my liner with pencils lately. Same thing with the inner corner. Just gonna slant it in like that. Cool. You know, if you ever have trouble with this, it hurts like a blotch, but if you just um, pluck the hairs in the inner corner, like if you have eyelashes in the inner corners, which I do, makes it a little easier, but what we're gonna do is just snatch it up with some concealer. This is why I'm trying to do this first, because once this dries, it's not moving, and the reason why I'm using such long-wearing products for my eyes is I find, especially if you're wearing glasses or sunglasses and you're wearing your mask, your hot ass breath will be blowing up and it, I feel like it makes my eyes more uh, sweaty. Eye area I just feels suffocated. So if everything's nice and dry, then you're in Gucci. Just because of my OCD, I'm gonna take whatever's left over on the brush that we use to snatch our brows and just give it a little clean up right quick underneath. So meow, we're going to take the Nude Sticks Magnetic Matte Eye Color. This one's in Desert Sun. I'm not going to sharpen it because I kind of like it a little bit. Ah, my well. I'm going to sharpen it. Just a tiny bit because I don't want it too, too sharp. But I'm going to take that and I'm going to go in my waterline. Because this really stays. It's no joke. Very serious business here. And I like this color because it's pretty similar to my concealer color almost. But they have a lot of these shades. So find one close to your skin color. If you want that extra bright, then do this guy. Or lighter. So here I'm gonna pull in the color a little bit more and bring this little wing we did on the inner part to a point. So this is almost like using it as a concealer pen, but it's not hydrating like a concealer pen, I feel. I've done concealer in my, in my waterline before and it just makes my eyes red all day, but this works really well. Same thing on the top. I'm just gonna do nice brightening on the lid. This is also pretty good to like do a little cut crease if you wanted to. But I'm gonna do a little finger blend. And you see that little dip there? Like that is fine because when my eyes are just normal, like resting, it looks even. So I'm just kind of using this to like highlight my eyelid. Sculpting up my shape a little bit. And this doesn't crease up on you either, like a concealer might. Mine always creases, because even though I have a lot of space, they're actually, my eyelid's pretty hidden in there, so I usually get quite a bit of creasing. Kill. Wait. Make it the same. 
That's why I like, don't like it too sharp because I like to let it kind of hug into the crease of my eye. So as you can see here what I'm doing and it kind of sinks in, that's like a great place to do your crease. I don't want to add too, too much. Now it's starting to dry and you can see it's like, it's stained. Next up, a magnetic matte eye color. This one's in La Isla, two pump sharpening. And I'm gonna go just above that area that we did with this color. And I'm gonna flick it up slightly, almost to blend. Being pretty light-handed like that finger blend mad quick because i don't want it to dry without being blended pull it up towards the liner i think this would be like a really cool way for somebody who might not feel so comfortable doing a cut crease if you just want to do a pencil if that's less intimidating or easier i think this would be like a really good way to do that and this is gonna stay really well even if you get sweaty this is really good so next up, I'm going to take the Makeup Forever Pro Bronze Fusion. This is in 35i. And I'm just going to go right underneath the brow and kind of blend it into the cut crease we just kind of did, but not too much. And I'm not going to quite contour my nose. This is where the mask usually sits. And I find it'll just put like streaks in it if you go right down too far. So I'm just going to start under the brow, drag it down. I'm kind of stopping a third of the way in, but I'm just dropping it down so it blends but I'm not actually pulling the color down so far. And then you can actually do a little tiny bit under the nose. Again, this is not what I would do if I was not wearing a mask. I'd do like a full contour, but it looks really crazy if you uh, do all that and then you have to take your mask off, you can see the lines. So I'll just leave it like that. This is actually a waterproof long wearing bronzer. And then I can just, so there's just a tiny bit right here. Just so it's a little bit bronze. I didn't need to do that, it's just habit to be honest. But I've got the Pat McGrath Labs Divine Rose 2 palette here. Let me show you the limited edition one I'm so happy to cop. Look at this. Gorgeous, got my fingerprints on it obviously. But I don't want to use this one because it's like special edition to me and I just want to keep it perfect but that's the Divine Rose 2 palette. Let me show you the one I use. Use it a lot and it is well loved for sure. This is what I used on my mom too in the last video. Anyways, so I'm gonna get into this color right here. I love this shimmer. I'm actually gonna take a Morphe M433 brush and I'm just gonna go all over the lid like that. This is what I was saying about the top of the liner. I'm like, whatever, because I just wanna make sure that we get this shimmer all over and then touch it up as we need to. And then I'm gonna take my finger and bump it up right in the center so it looks almost glossy and just kinda up for a little extra shimmer like that our nose snatching brush with a little bit of the bronzer left over i'm just going to flick it away so it kind of blends into the rest of it but we still get that highlight right in the center yeah and then we'll take a smaller brush in this kind of pinky shade it looks pink after and the shimmer just going to tap that right underneath for a lot nice and bright now you can go in with the black coffee shade and I'm just gonna touch it up. I was actually pretty careful. I don't even think I need to really touch it up. But I will just cause I just to make it a little darker. And this is like a little long wearing too, by the way. So one thing that I've found works really well, cause I find I've worn highlighter and like the strap of the whatever type of mask you're wearing seems to cut into the highlighter and lifts it, lifts it off and stuff like that. So I actually like to take a blush. This one is Foxglove by KBD Vegan Beauty. Really cool formula. And I'm gonna take the same bronzer because I do wanna bronze my face a little bit. I'm gonna do a little bit of the bronzer first, just lightly in a totally different way, not so much to contour. Sometimes when you're adding new shapes and shadows on your face and then you're wearing a mask where you can get a little bit sweaty and it takes it off, if there's any bits of it like missing, it looks crazy. So I just wanna warm up my face a little bit. If it takes any little bits of it off, it's not as noticeable. And same with the blush, but you can still get nice dimension. So I'm gonna show you that in uno momento. One thing I wanna say too, if you're wearing a mask all the time and, you're, and it's hot out and you're keeping it in like a humid mask, try and wipe your brushes at least every once in a while. Um, even with rubbing alcohol, it can clean it really well. It'll mess up your brushes, to be honest, but I'm finding I have to wash my brushes, beauty blenders, more frequently 
frequently just because of how hot it is underneath the mask. So super recommend cleansing your brushes more often than not. The cheapest solution is rubbing alcohol. Go with synthetic brushes that aren't as porous to like hold the product in and that'll really make a difference. So I've been using the alcohol, even alcohol wipes if you can just do like a real quick swipe on it and then put your product on. But because it's hot, you're under a mask, you're breathing into it. I'm finding that I'm having to be extra, just being extra with cleaning stuff. I always like wash beauty blenders like right before I use it, but just making sure that you're disinfecting everything because you don't want to have any type of bacteria and it's not that your skin's dirty or anything like that but just bacteria lands on your face like, like you can't help it and then we're breathing into a mask that's sweaty and then it's hot out it's just like a disaster so try and keep your skin clean as possible and your tools really clean and that will help your skin and just help your makeup stay on better too because you're not having your skin trying to fight so many things I'm about to get my period so I'm breaking out right now too I don't even know I'm breaking out anymore I just am that's just my life I just realized but I'm finding clean your stuff more it'll make a big difference so another reason why I did the liquid glow which I always do anyways you see how I got a little highlight anyways that's why I'm not really gonna go on with highlight if you want to be super light-handed I'd almost do it first I'm not going to cuz I just feel like it looks crazy underneath the mask so I'm gonna go in with the bronzer and I'm just gonna use it to warm up my cheeks not doing it in a contour way but it's going to look contoured because it's got two dimensions to it. You see how it's not really, not two dimension, but more like a skin-like finish. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a sheen. So that's gonna hug and darken on the contours of your face without putting in a contour line. So I've still got a little snatched. And I'm kind of dragging it from my cheekbones, pulling it down, stopping right at the hollows of my cheeks. Usually when I do my bronzer, I like take the center of the brush and I just like wiggle it in. That'll leave lines because it's quite a bit darker than your skin. So I'm just being very light with it. Giving myself a little chan, you know. I'm still gonna smash the jawline because this doesn't get the mask. So, see, I didn't really do a contour. I'm just warming up my face a little bit. Then we're gonna go in with some blush, and I'm just gonna do a little bit of that. Now, I just put on a lip balm. I wouldn't actually wear like a lipstick because I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Your lips are going to hit the, the thing. You could put a little lip balm on. I honestly have just been putting nothing, just my lip balm underneath, one that's kind of matte, that isn't shiny because that'll stick to the mask and travel up everywhere. So if you can get away with it, I should have actually put a lip balm on it at the beginning of the tutorial and then you can kind of eat it off and then put your mask on. But anyways, moving on to eyes. So I'm going to use the new Pat McGrath Labs Dark Star Mascara. This liner, I mean, mascara is really freaking bomb. Really lifts your lashes. I'm still going to put lashes on anyways because I'll have to do the most, but it's really nice without. I like that it's super black too, but I don't just do it all, you know. Yeah, look at that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. Such a Pat McGrath Labs stand and also Pat McGrath. If you wear glasses, I would just do this mascara and live your best life. I'm going to use the Lily Lashes Miami Flare. I've pretty much figured out what's going to look good on my eye just because I've measured lashes for the past like freaking 10 years or more. I'm just going to cut off the ends, but there's a little dip right there. I can tell it's going to poke me and drive me nuts. I'm just going to... There's that. Well, that might even be a little long. Let me measure. Let me humble myself right quick. I'm just be like, <laughs> I know everything. I've been doing this for years. Maybe I don't. Oh no, we're good. Heading back to the drawing board. I love the I love a lived in lash, but one thing that I'll do is makeup remover wipe because sometimes when they curl up on the end, like I don't really feel that vibe. I feel like it kind of pulls my eyes down a bit. So I'll just, you could take a makeup remover wipe and I just like to flatten out the ends of the lash like this. Cause I like the flare, but a lot of times they like wing them out or wing, curl them up more on the ends, which I think a lot of people like, but that's just, it doesn't look good on my eyes. Like I need that fox eye glam, you feel me? So get them saturated like that, pinch it and pull it out, wing them out even more. That'll give you more of like a fox eye look. Like I prefer like a lived in lash a little bit more than like brand new out of the box ones just so that they can kind of fold to your eye a little bit more and anyways this will give it that look but look at that. Compared to the other side, and these aren't glued in but look at how that looks and look at this one. Looks a little bit more. Like it's not doing the most like this side is. Like I don't like the little swoopy swoop, I like the one that's like wow. So I'm gonna do that to the other side, make it nice and scraped. 
make sure you don't have any makeup remover on your lash when you put your glue on because it'll just get all weird and rubbery. You're not supposed to, but I've been using Weave Bond for lash glue for so long and I'm always like, I don't wanna really advertise it because as a makeup artist, you're not really supposed to do that. But I mean, at this point, as a friend, I'm just gonna say I really freaking like my um, Weave Bond as lash glue. I usually go like that. On my new fanned out lashes. I don't know, man, like a lot of people, it looks really great for them to have a curly lash. For me, it just doesn't. Maybe because I don't really do a rounded eye shape on myself, I usually keep it quite angled out and I just feel like it looks best when it's angled like that or more flat on the ends. It's actually not quite on the bottom of my lash line on the very end because I want it to be more lifted. Mm -hmm. She's ready. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to take some of that mascara, do it on the bottom lashes and a little bit on the top too, just on the outer edge. Because usually the hairs could be a little thicker on then. Just do like that. Makes more foxy clear actual coming at you. And last but not least, let's put on my little love and mask on it. This is the Pat McGrath one. This is the one I just been using. You can put them in the wash too, which is nice. But you see how this line goes up like this and it follows the shape of the eye. So that completes our look still okay underneath. And usually masks, they're right over your nose, so as I was saying, doing the contour just to about here. You see a short, you see a honey, and you need to pull it off. You're Gucci, just watch your wig. But yeah, that completes the tutorial. I hope you guys all enjoyed. I hope there's some good like tips and tricks in here. Like I said, I don't want to make something where you have to use all new products or like replace your makeup system because you have to wear a mask. But just different placement of products that you already use can make a huge difference. And that's what I want to do. I didn't want to be out here spending hella monies on new stuff. I just wanted to repurpose and reuse stuff that I've already been using to see if I can make it work. So hopefully there's some tips in there that'll help. There are some things you might wanna try out. Also, another thing I wanted to say in the beginning, if you already use a primer that really works, you can use two primers, you know? So I've actually used the Milk Makeup Primer with the Pat McGrath Primer or like a little bit of a pore filling primer if my skin's not doing so good. I'll do the Milk Makeup one first and then the pore filling one just where I have pores visible. There's no rules with wearing more than one primer. But this is how I've been trying to get my makeup to stay on while I'm doing my part, you know, with the mask and stuff. Some places require you to wear a mask. This is why I wouldn't wear lipstick because I'd be suffocating under here. But this is, I think, a good way to show off your eyes. They're like, I'm still a body, even though um, I can't show my whole face right now. And when you take it off, you're good to go still. So I just realized that I didn't put powder on. I've been using the Pat McGrath powder to put over top, but I mean, this is seeming to be staying on, so maybe I don't need it. Maybe I'm doing the most for no reason. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and follow. Love yourself, stay pretty, and I'll see you guys again in the next video. I'll see you guys again in the next video. Take care.